All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rose Productions podcast. Today I'm sitting down with Brian White, history teacher at Allegheny High School and leader of the Historical Research Methods class. Nice to sit down with you today, Brian. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your classes and community events you've been integral to. Could you please state your name, your job, and possibly your contribution to the community? Uh, my name is Brian White, and I'm a history teacher at Allegheny High School. I've been teaching for 26 years in the community through my work. I teach a course called Historical Research Methods that has done multiple projects in preserving local history. Could you explain to me your job history with Allegheny High School? How did it start? How long you've had this job? And what duties do you attend to with the school? I started teaching at Allegheny High School in 1997. Teaching at the school has also served as the assistant band director and coached uh, mock trial. Uh, Early on, I began the development of the historical research methods course, which I wrote the curriculum for. With this historical research methods class, this broadcast journalism class, would you describe to me a little about what that is and how did it start? So basically, the historical research methods class um, came about from a social studies seminar course that I was teaching and in that course we were exploring and looking at films and the impact on popular culture, American movies. The students had a great interest in that and because of that we started the idea of during the 30s and 40s there were all these great movie theaters in Allegheny County that are gone. How could we like document that history? From that, that kind of spawned the idea of actually doing an oral history project to publish a book on local histories in Allegheny County related to movie theaters. We did that. We accomplished that goal. From there, uh, that became kind of like a, oh, wow, look what we did. Could we do it again? Uh, We thought, well, how far back could we go in using the oral history methodology? Uh, That would be like, if we didn't do it now, we would lose it for future generations. So we thought, well, the Great Depression would be the next logical steps because when we did the Great Depression, from there, it just kind of evolved that we did uh, a chronology, move from the Great Depression to the next year during World War II, which we broke into two years, then we did the 1950s, and then we did the Vietnam War era. And then once we finished that, then we kind of broke into subcategories. And each year we would do like the history of Allegheny High School or the, just the history of Cumberland in general and other topics. Last year, your historical research methods class was responsible for the Allegheny Museum exhibit, Allegheny, the American High School Experience. Could you tell me a little bit about how that project became available to you and the process of starting a team to build it? So the uh, Allegheny Museum exhibit, Allegheny the American High School Experience, uh, came about due to the efforts of Michael Thompson and his Fade to Blue exhibit, an alumni who desired to photograph aspects of the old building as it sit empty. From that idea, we could do a, a project kind of at the same time that he was doing his project on curating this museum exhibit for the history of Allegheny High School. With that partnership with the museum, I kind kind of handpick a team of students who I thought their uh, skill sets and or interest would help generate uh, the product that I knew we would need. A professional level exhibit, you know, a museum exhibit is something that we'd never done to this point. All right, so if I was someone who didn't get to attend the exhibit, could you paint me a picture of it? What all did it contain and how did the students lead to the success of this project? Uh, well, with any project like this, where you begin is not what the end result happens to be. And it's always been the history of any project whether you're doing a historical documentary or publishing a book, or in this case, the museum exhibit. We had never done a museum exhibit, so it was kind of like we were making it up as we were going along. The concept of how you include the history of the high school, it's been around for over 130 years, how to touch upon everything. It was kind of difficult to figure out first, like what subjects you had to do. First, say like football's big at Allegheny, that would be part of its heritage, just like basketball, the band, drama department, student life, and all these things you break down and try to research to fit how those things are going to put together. And then, of course, the Lego piece just kind of came out of the whole uh, germination of the whole project. I remember taking the students down to the museum uh, to see the space that we'd be in, and there was a model of Fort Cumberland. Drake, you said, wouldn't it be cool if we could do a model of the old Allegheny High School? Well, yeah, that would be cool, but what would we make it out of? And I think you responded, make it out of Legos. From that, obviously, came the centerpiece. It ended up 
being kind of like the focal point of the whole museum exhibit. So the Allegheny the American High School Experience exhibit was presented in conjunction with local photographer Mike Thompson's Art Council photo exhibit, Fade to Blue. Could you explain to me a little bit about his project and how everyone collaborated together? Uh, so basically what Michael did is he looked at Allegheny High School on Cedric Street and felt what locations would he like to photograph. So it was like he wanted pictures from the gymnasium, he wanted pictures of the band, he wanted pictures of the theater, pictures of the classroom, pictures of the cafeteria, and then he arranged through Facebook a series of bookings where people could go decide if they wanted to be a part of one of the particular pictures, say if it was for the band. And so basically, as I said, this is sort of how we became involved with the process, even though we were two separate different projects. Really what he did with the museum was a complete, we could have done that and it would have stand on, stood on its own, and Michael could have done his thing and it would have stood on its own, but the marriage of doing those two things together and being at the same time generated a lot of interest and community involvement. At the museum, for example, we had over 2,000 people that came to the museum, and I'm assuming that at the Arts Council it was probably around the same number. We also had the community event, the reunion day on July 9th, party of Allegheny graduates at Canal Place. So wrapping up with the journalism methods books class, what is one of the most notable memories you have of all time leading these projects? So one of the most notable things that I remember about the oral history program and the methods course when we were doing the veterans book on World War II in the 2001-2002 school year, uh, one of the questions that we asked all the veterans, to which we interviewed 76 veterans in total. On December 7, 1941, where were you and how did it make you feel? It just so happened that on September 11th of 2001, on that fall, we were had an, a veteran coming in for an interview and scheduled around lunchtime. And he came in and sat down with the students. At that point, we were two hours into the knowledge of what had transpired that morning in New York. And when that question came up, and the, the students asked that World War II veteran, December 7, 1941, where were you? And what do you remember? How did it make you feel? Like a sort of an awkward pause and then the World War II veteran sort of leaning into the students, very direct saying, how I felt is exactly how you feel right now. And that cross-generational dialogue that is you know, signified in that moment is kind of what the entire program is about. Now I know you have another division of your methods class, the broadcast class, Allegheny Morning Live. What is it and what do you hope to be its future as a executive producer of it. Yeah, so the methods course kind of broke into two different components. Group now that does Allegheny Morning Live or morning announcements, it's not really doing historical you know, research. It's still a methodology in that we're going to uh, doing sort of a broadcast journalism. The, the curriculum was adapted. You know, some other schools, they don't do morning announcements, do podcast or other things that might be more actually broadcast journalism centric versus what the oral history project was all about. All right, so as you know, I was your student for two years. Could you tell me a little bit how special it is to you to connect with some of your students after they've left your classes? And how are these connections meaningful to you? How is it different from other teacher-student connections? Well, I think with the connection with students that you have, particularly in a performance-based class, such as doing AML, broadcast journalism, uh, the methods project, the museum project, or a book publication, I mean, there's a sense of, I don't really feel that I'm the teacher, you know, a supervisor, producer, and I think you develop a relationship with the students that's more of a work-based relationship than it is the teacher-student relationship. And then that kind of carries over post-graduation. Probably the students that I have the deepest connection with is we're putting out a product and we're all in it together, unless it's kind of a deep-rooted connection more than you get in your just general classroom. All right, so as we close out, do you want to speak about anything that's going to happen in the future with the methods class or any other projects you're involved with? All right, so as far as future projects, next year our methods course is actually going to re-enter the museum game or business as downtown Cumberland is being remodeled. Baltimore Street is all torn up right now. There's a multi-million dollar plan in place for changing that. I thought this was kind of the perfect time just as when Cedric Street building was going to be raised. It was a perfect time for the history of Allegheny High School. This is a perfect time for a history of downtown Cumberland. I think it's going to be a lot different in a sense of what we did with the Allegheny High School project because obviously that was you know specific to one community, the Allegheny High School.
Jazz Cool community, this is going to be opened up to a lot more interest from all of Cumberland, um, and particularly with what's going on right now downtown, you know, get a lot of attention for what it is, so we're excited about that. Is there going to be a Lego downtown? I'm not saying anything. All right, Brian, thanks for sitting down with me today. Thanks for listening to the Rose Productions podcast. Everyone have a great day.